It's Monday. It's Mailbag Monday. As usual, I have a beer. In this case, it is None Shall Pass Oatmeal Stout from Devil May Care Brewing Company. Uh, they brewed it actually at Stone Angels uh, Brewery on Pemmon Highway in Winnipeg. So I'm, I'm not sure who this Devil May Care group is. Obviously, they've uh, contracted to use somebody else's brewery for now, which is fine. Um, and as you can see, I've already poured it. Well, let's just not uh, question that. I'm getting a lot of chocolate uh, and sort of roast and coffee and stuff, and which makes sense. Um, they're claiming uh, notes of dark chocolate coffee figs, dates, and yeah. As bold as the Black Knight himself. I wonder who they're influenced by. It says here, it's the perfect stout for unwinding after a long day of pushing the prem a lot, cutting down large trees with herring, or getting a new shrubbery. Well, that looks nice, but it's not too expensive. Enjoy it yourself or share it with your friend called Dead. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Get okay, the first thing we have is adapter. Which is exactly that. It is an adapter. It is an RF adapter. It is an SME connector on that end. And that little connector whose name I can never remember, which is for the, for these software defined radios, the RTL SDR type radio. So that should fit into there nicely and I can connect to an SME. So now my adapters include BNC, uh, F type and SME plus the two cheap little uh, antennas that came with the things. So I should be able to connect to just about any antenna that I come across um, or adapt to and from them. MCX male to SMA female RG316 low loss pigtail adapter cable AD uh, from Endwind is who I got this from. Currently they're not shipping it to Canada. Clearly they did when I bought it. And when I bought it, I paid $1.48 Canadian with free shipping. Uh, currently it's going for $1.57. They don't have much else to say for it other than the same thing. So this connector, whose name I couldn't remember, is an MCX male. And I'm probably still not going to remember it next time I pull one off. I'm not sure why, but whatever. Okay, next in we have charging plug. I wonder what sort of charger this is. Oh! not actually a charging plug it is simply a travel adapter so on this side oh this is the this is the Japanese plug it's it matches up close enough with the North American one but it's not polarized North American plug the live and neutral are different size so that you get it the right way around on an ungrounded one and on the back side here it's one of those could be anything's um, could be the EU plug could be the UK plug could be what do Australian? I'm not sure. Um, but it does a whole bunch of different countries. However, the reason that I bought this, I actually ordered this back when I got that 3D doodler pen thinking that I could just adapt from, uh, just plug that into 110 and use the DC power pack with it. Hang on, let me go get it. Well, the other me is uh, off getting that demonstration set up. Let's just check the listing. Useful Universal UK EU Oz EU to US American Travel Power Adapter Plug Converter from Song Shenki 1972, 99 cents Canadian and uh, free shipping. That's the same price I paid for it way, way back. Not seeing very much about it down here. Maximum 250 volts, 10 amps, um, and adapts all these things. Now, remember, it's not a power converter. It's just a pin shape adapter. So we'll have to be a little bit careful with thing, this thing. Let's uh, go back and take a closer look. Okay, so as I said, I bought this thing when I got this uh, 3D doodling pen 
um, because it came with a European plug. So my intention was to just for it to plug in kind of like that. And that does work. And then I can plug it into there. So we'll just, uh, just see if that's actually outputting the promised voltage. Now this adapter says on it that it can work from 100 to 240 volts incoming 50 or 60 hertz. So it's just a very universal little adapter. Um, except for it's not making connection worth a damn here. There we go, 12.2 volts if I hold it the right way. There we go. So that does the job. However, in the interim, between when I ordered this thing and when it actually showed up, I found this at a Goodwill store, which is actually a transformer, which creates 220 volts out of our North American 110. And it's got the proper European plug on it with a ground and everything. This thing cost me 99 cents. This cost me 250. And this doesn't seem to fit very well. It's pretty, pretty loosey goosey in there. Um, you can see the Europeans fit kind of in there, which is sort of in between the squares for the uh, UK one and the kind of angly ones for the Australian one. And so, quite honestly, this thing's not really worth the 99 cents that I paid for it. It's very close to what the big Clive calls a death adapter. Okay, what is the next thing? It says charger module. That's promising. Hopefully it's better than the last one. Oh. Okay, it looks like a USB charge module of some kind. So what do we have? Obviously USB output, an inductor, so it's going to be either a buck or a boost of some kind. A little chip in there, handful of capacitors on that side, and clearly a couple of DC inputs over there. Okay, so I'm going to guess that that is the positive input. I don't know if that's going to be a buck or a boost though. I think I might want to go and look this up before I start plugging anything into it and seeing what it does. QC 3.0 2.0 USB Rapid Rapid Module Charge DIY Conseil Telephone Charger Voltaire. All right, you guys in Quebec and France, quit laughing at me. Uh, from Leafo, um, I got this for two dollars and eighty-two cents with free international shipping. So this is one of those fancy new. Uh, charge type units that uses smart charging and it looks like it's got a multiple different types Qualcomm quick charge 2 and 3 Huawei's FCP uh, MediaTek PE BC 1.2 whatever that is support for Android and Apple blah 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 all the rest of that compatible with everything or it just goes for a normal 5 volts if none of those are appropriate very cool um, so it is a step down circuit board it takes between 8 and 24 volts in and steps it down to somewhere between 5 and 12 volts on the output. Well, that's interesting. Best be having a little play with that. So, I've got my little Rui Ding uh, Intelligent Load out here. And it does support these various quick charge modes. Oh, why did you start? Um, oh, so I've got 15 volts on my little uh, power supply over here. And I've got it set the current limit at 3 amps, but I don't think I'm going to get that high. Um, this guy is connected to the Rui Ding, and I'm not 100% clear. I've done a little bit of uh, poking around the manual, but I'm not 100% clear on exactly how to use these quick charge modes. But I can get it to dance, so let's do this. We'll start him up uh, at 15 volts, put it into current mode. So right now we're set at half an amp we'll turn that on and because it's a higher voltage over here that's a lower amperage the wattage is the same and this thing actually shows us watts 2.7 watts at the moment so that's 2.7 watts and 5.2 volts and 
half an amp. It's going to start cranking this thing up. One amp, one and a half amps. And is there a voltage sagging? No, it's not. It's still 5.3 volts. So that's awesome. So they're just shy of two amps. The fan kicked in. Uh, 10.8 watts. And that is still 5.3 volts. Why am I going the wrong way? Two and a half amps, 13 watts, 5.3 volts still. There's three amps out of this thing, which is 16 watts and 5.3 volts. Uh, what's going on over here? And that's about 1.2 amps at the 15 volts coming in here. So my wires are going to start. Well, they're not bad. Let's zoom back down on here. So where are we again so we're at three amps so that three amps isn't going to change no matter what else i do because that's set by the potentiometer so now i'm going to hold this quick charge button down here and that sets it into the different quick charge modes there's the automatic one now you know i just ignore that for a minute it should start stepping through the different modes i think i hit okay maybe There we go. So it's stepping through the different voltages, five, nine, 12 volts. You can see these LEDs moving around here. And it's stepping up the voltage by one volt steps. And all that's happening on a USB connector. It's back down to five volts. I think there's one more step that it takes here. So it seems to have settled on quick charge two, three mode, which is interesting. I'm just gonna now one of these modes. Yeah, okay. So I'm in quick charge three mode right now, and I can step the voltage. Ooh, overpower protection. So oh, that's interesting. I didn't like that. I'm just going to reset it by turning the power supply on and off again. So anyway, so this thing can trigger this guy to do, to do uh, its different quick charge modes. So I'm assuming if I plug my phone into this, it should also be able to do that. That's getting quite warm for me dragging three amps through it. <laughs> wow, that's the most powerful USB source that I've got. That's neat. You can power almost anything from it. Wow. I like that. Next thing in. This one was obviously, well, bought from China, but shipped from another one of these drop shippers in Mississauga. I'm going to have to look up that address in Mississauga and find out what that is. Oh, ho. USB sound adapter, double USB microphone, double USB headset. 7. Dot, virtual 7.1 surround sound. That looks interesting. Let's get this glary thing out of the way. What does it say here? Microphone mute, headset mute, volume up, down. Uh, and it's got two, looks like it's got two headset with microphones in and out. Okay. So we got headphone, microphone, headphone, microphone. And over here we got a microphone mute and speaker mute and volume up and down. Interesting. It says virtual 7.1 sound. Aha! There's the lie right there. Includes the Xear 3D, the virtual virtual 7.1 channel sound simulation software for xp and vista none of which exists in this house no drivers etc should work on linux and mac but not with that magic software so it's only simulating 7.1 which means it's basically just a sound card which is fine let's go uh see how much this old turkey cost me External virtual 
one channel USB 2.0 3D audio sound card laptop PC mic adapter. The not only could I not find the listing, I couldn't even find the guy I sold it from anymore. It looks like his uh, account's been terminated or deleted or something. Anyway, I paid two dollars and ten cents. Here's a random one, um, just so we can take a look at the details of it or what they say. It's probably all copied and pasted. Um, but there's not much here that isn't already on the package. So I think I'm going to try and connect it and just see what happens. Okay, so I've connected to my old standby microphone, the one that I've been using for a long time before I got the new uh, new one. Go back to the microphone video uh, about a month ago if you want to see which one this is. This is the, the one that's just tied on to a selfie stick handle. Uh, anyway... This is that microphone plugged into one of the two microphone inputs on this thing. And I've got my headphones plugged in to the output. So if I hold the my earphones up to the microphone, let's see if you can hear this. So it works. Uh, it does the job and it doesn't sound too horrendous. At least the headphone part does. I'm not sure what the microphone part sounds like to you. And there's, there I just plugged it into the other microphone input, and I think it's doing the same thing. And when I plug into the other headphone output, it does the same thing. So I'm thinking that they're just like paralleled or mixed or something inside. I'm not sure. Okay, let's see what the last thing is. LED module, it says. Ah, it's another one of these NeoPixel rings. Okay, we've looked at these a couple of times before. This is a 12 pixel ring. I think I've actually already got one of these somewhere. Um, I think I'll, yeah, I'll connect that up later. Um, there's really not much to say. These are, well, I don't know if you haven't seen these things before. They're addressable LEDs. They're RGB LEDs. Each one of these is RGB, so three colors. Um, and each one is addressable. So you can tell just this one to be on or off or red, green, or blue or combination. This one to be completely different. This one to be different. This one to be different all the way around. And you do that with a single serial data input line. So you connect five volts and ground uh, and data comes in and ripples through them. Um, so you send the serial data in. The first one grabs whatever is addressed to the first LED and then passes, strips that off, passes the rest of it along. Now this one grabs what's addressed to the first LED, which is actually what this one would have thought was the second LED, and so on all the way around. So, uh, and then whatever's left over gets passed out the data out and onto another bunch of these things. You can go many hundreds. Um, I'm the, I think the only limitation is really the timing um, but I've seen people using hundreds and hundreds of these things off a single digital output pin from an Arduino so again this is another one that I couldn't find the li the actual listing for but it is RGB LED ring 12-bit WS2812 5050 RGB LED plus integrated driver module I bought it from Sheng uh but they currently seem to have their store closed. There's nothing in there when I go looking through their store. Strange. Maybe they've shut down for vacation. Uh, however, here is a, a random cheapest seller superstar. I mean, lots of people have these you saw from the search earlier. And the search is what I'm going to link to. Um, this guy's selling it for two nineteen at the moment. As I said, I paid $2.21, so it's pretty close. And there's not too much to say about them if you're just going to be using them for most people that are using these, you're going to be using them with a library on the Arduino or with some kind of a driver that somebody else has built. So you don't have to worry about all this nitty gritty stuff down here. The fact that the data rate is 800 K bits per second, or that the PWM frequency is somewhere in the 400 Hertz range or over 400 Hertz, or that there is a stupid number of colors that you can make out of it. You don't have to worry about that. The library takes care of it. 
So just for funsies, let's fire this thing up. Um, I've, uh, I did dig out the other one that I got. I'm just going to solder a, a little set of header pins onto this one so that we can connect to it easily. So I'll grab a 5 volts and a ground from over there. 5 and ground and then the data in. Sit flat you. We'll go to the data out of this guy. And then when I turn it on there we go. Isn't that fun? Let's see if they can make these things a little bit more, the colors a little bit more visible. There. That's more colorful than looking at it directly on, isn't it? All right, here is today's Mailbag Monday assortment. Let's see what we got. Well, the NeoPixel ring, the LED ring, uh, that took five weeks to get here. The, what do we got here? This USB charger, the quick charge USB charger took 28 days. That's pretty impressive. Uh, this USB sound adapter thing only took 12 days to get here. Wow. That's got to be a record. Uh, the, what do we got here? The SMA adapter, the SMA to remember that MC, what the hell is that thing called? MCX to SME adapter took two and a half months. And this stupid little useless cheap piece of crap took five bloody months to get here. It's just not worth it in all sorts of levels. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, I really appreciate you guys showing up to uh, see what I'm up to. Um, if you've got any comments or questions or you want to tell me how stupid I am for buying this or anything else uh, please jump down into the comments and uh, we can have a chat about that um, thanks as always to my patreon supporters for helping me to buy these things um, keeps me from uh, from going too broke doing it and I enjoy doing these mailbag Mondays and you guys from what I've heard down in the comments and just from seeing how many people watch these these Mailbag Monday videos, I think you guys are liking them. So I'm going to keep doing them for as long as I can. This is this is a fun time, just hanging out in the basement, seeing what's coming in from the Far East. Thank you once again, as always, for watching. I will talk to you later.